All right, hey, what's up, guys? So today let's talk about the Argus BNVD 1431's Mark II. Now, uh, <laughs> if that's not a mouthful. Um, now, the, the BNVD 1431 Mark II's, right, or 1431's is what we're going to call them for the, or for the, the video. Um, I originally got them from Op4 Night Vision in uh, Canada. They uh, offered to send them to me after we were spending time in the class. The owner and I were in a class together down here in Miami. And uh, we had a great time. We laughed, joked, all that jazz. And uh, what we found is like, hey, man, like he was offering up some cool night vision or housings that were optimized by him originally. And then Argus started taking in all his optimizations and making them standard for that Mark II system. And, um, and they were really nice. I was like, you know what, let me check these things out. So he let me play around with them in class and, and kind of use them for a little bit and, and really just get a feel for them. And I liked them compared to 31 alphas. I was pretty impressed with, with what they can do and what they offered. And, uh, and especially when it, when you were talking like how 31s, uh, if you saw my original video on them, the diopters, if you have those that don't have rear diopter adjustments, those are kind of set so you're kind of stuck to that diopter setting and you have to use corrected lenses to be able to see through there or if you don't have corrected lenses and you have bad vision that may be something that gets in the way so not that it hinders that many people but it's probably hindering at least one person in the world so something to think about is options that are out there that are 31 like and they have diopter adjustments so this 1431 mark ii has pretty good uh, little features. We'll talk about a couple of them um, because the full-fledged features and what they did compared to the Mark One to Mark Two, you'll have to go look at their website. There's too many things that they adjusted or fixed, and um, and it just hey, go look at their website if you really want those those little spec sheets and and features and stuff. Now, some of the features that that I dig right that I like about them one they're they're fully articulating they articulate just as far as the DTNVS is and DTNVGs almost um, and stuff like that so they're very are like very articulating where like fully upside down they stand on the pods uh, very nice I like that because when I fold them up away from my eyes I want them to go as far out of my vision as possible so that one they're not in the way and I can see more and then two that way they I know that when I bring them up on my mount they tuck away much easier so giving a little bit less strain to my neck holding my helmet now the other things about these that I really dug and really do like a lot the rear diopters right they gave me or or uh, op4 offered up the rear diopters that they make that's some kind of optimized 3d printed one which i was like eh, but you know there's a lot of 3d printed stuff out there that's really well done and lasts and uh and they've been really good they i've been very very happy with how they work they're very low profile in the sense of like how to adjust so you don't accidentally bump them they're not easily like moved um, so it's it's kind of nice and they 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 lock well. So I I've been very happy with them um, So it's a little bit different from the PVS 14 uh, Diopter adjustments, but it uses the same lens assembly on the inside um, Same thing on the front end is a 14 or PVS 14 style lens assembly um, both of these are with RPO 2 glass and uh, And it's been really good. I've been very happy with it I I'd like to try RPO 3 so I may get some of that and and redo this this little setup here but overall like right now I've been pretty happy with it now the other thing too that I did was I got l3 super gain tubes for these um, the reason I went with super gain tubes was one I was gonna get something with manual adjustment so I kind of want to take advantage of the super gain or the high luminescence or luminance gain and also take advantage of dimming it down where putting super gain tubes into an auto gating system you may not get the full I would say the full enchilada, yeah, of the whole the whole package of what that offers you because you can't actually take advantage of it because the system is giving you whatever it deems you need to see with its auto gaining or the amount of gain that you get. So sometimes I want to adjust it myself and I want to play around with it. Not that I do often, but there are times where I'm like, hmm, is it better dim? Is it better bright? And, and you get to play around with it in different environments are going to give you different things. So just something to think about, especially if you're getting super gain tubes, you may want to look at either manual gain housings, right? Like the new Acton Black manual gain housing or the 1431s or any of the other myriad of, of uh, manual gain 
units that are out there. Now, the other thing too, uh, which I really like is that they have auto off features for some of the, or they have an auto off feature for when the unit gets to a vertical or past vertical setting um, on the on a vertical plane. So once it passes that, it'll auto shut off the tubes. It won't auto shut off the system. So once you bring it back down, it'll come back on. Now, I don't leave that feature on. I actually prefer it without it. Um, I've used it on DTMVGs and DTMVSs for years. But what I find is sometimes you reach that point when I'm just trying to like look at stars and stuff, or I'm looking up the side of a building and I want, I want that system to like stay on or, you know, whatever I, whatever it is that I look up or I'm in an awkward shooting position, whatever. Um, I don't want to end up not being able to see because my unit shuts off. So something to think about there. It's a really cool feature. I thought like having it shut off or having the auto off feature, like, <laughs> easily shut off uh, so that I don't have to use it really nice to have and that's how I usually use these then the other thing that um, that these offer that I thought was really cool compared to like 31s and stuff was the way that these IPD stops they are so much more um, I would say smooth and robust so they don't they're smooth in the sense of how they move and then they're robust in the way that they don't get bumped and and shift and now your IPD stops are stopping you you know this far in and now you can't see that tube when you bring them in so um, it was really nice to have and and see that they they improve that uh, as well as the fact that like hey like anytime that you use these kind of systems and you set your IPDs or your IPD stops to some spot that they're going to come back and return there. Now these 1431s also feature like a battery pack. You can use the Argus um, battery pack. Uh, I don't really use them very often. I don't. I actually sold one of my battery packs a while ago uh, just because it sits around and didn't do anything. So I, I don't really use them often. But for those that like battery packs, uh, you can use them with this. And it uses a Fisher connection. So nothing crazy there, guys. Um, like I said, most of these features and stuff are listed really nice on their website check those out but overall like my impressions or my my feelings on these ever since I got them which I think I've had them for I want to say over half a year now I've been really happy with them so they've been doing really well there's no real reason that I would hate them or be like ah these are shit um most people think that like they're airsoft grade or whatever, but really they're not. I, I think they've been great. Uh, they've been doing everything that they're supposed to do. Um, I've only dropped them once and, <laughs> and they're fine. Um, but, uh, but they've been very good. And, um, not only that, but what I've found is also if, uh, depending on what your job is doing any kind of like surveillance or something like that, having this manual gain and being able to like actually articulate these in different formats in different ways has been very useful in weirder positions or in mounted positions on tripods in certain places so um if you want to know more about that like you got to take a surveillance course with me but <laughs> but other than that guys uh it's been a really cool system um i'd say like they're pretty pretty good to go in my opinion and i've been very happy with them not to say that my one sample size equals all of them in any way but uh but overall like what op4 did um by sending me the housing really like kind of um one they they inhibited my my want to kind of play around with more 31 style housings um but they also showed me like there are ways to improve like older ones that are that just didn't do as well and then also going through this process i kind of got to play around with or go ahead and purchase super gain tubes to play around with because now i had something that they would go into and play well uh versus not having super gains or putting super gains into some kind of um auto adjusting or auto gaining system that's gonna kind of limit what I'm getting out of those tubes. So hopefully this helps guys, uh, just literally just an overview and kind of my thoughts on a system that in my opinion is pretty good and has been really good, but it's up to you to kind of like choose what you want when it comes to housings. Uh, remember that when buying night vision, like the most important part is whatever tubes you buy and that's where you should put most of your money. Um, and then the housing, like I like to tell people is kind of like, you know, if, if this was a car, the tubes are like the engine and what your engine can do, how long it'll last, how, how good performance you're going to get out of it. 
the housing is essentially just the shell and the dashboard of features that you want inside the car. And then the glasses, how clear your windows are, I don't know. But either way, that's that's kind of how I look and how I view night vision nowadays, is, well, really for a long time now, has been make sure I get the best tubes I could possibly buy, right? Make sure I can get the best engine in my car. And then from there, I'm gonna try and do uh, my best to get the features I'm looking for out of my housing. So if I want the bare bones stuff, nothing crazy, literally no illuminator, nothing, there are housings that offer that. If I want all the features like manual gain, an uh, onboard illuminator, IPD stops, a, a Fisher or a plug for a battery pack, all that stuff, then there are housings for that as well. So look at what features you're looking for for the environment you're going to play in, and that's the way you usually buy stuff or how educated consumers buy stuff. Others are just like, put it on the card. Um, so hopefully this helps guys. And if you have any questions, go ahead and put them, put them below. Take care.